Okay, it looks like we're going to get it started here in just a minute, everybody. Sorry, I once again, I had to restart the stream. Not sure why. <laughs> so just give me a second here, and we'll be uh, good to go. Let me just get everybody linked over, and we'll get started. Here we go. Okay, good. Perfect. All right, hopefully everybody is having a, uh, a good evening. We're going to get started here in just a second. As soon as I get everything else like kind of set up and making sure everything is going well. So um, just give me another couple of seconds here. Would be nice if things worked right off the bat, but hey, um, they don't do that. Hey, Tanny. Hey, uh, let's get everybody in here. Hello, Sevs. Welcome back to the classroom. We got Haryad. Hello. I believe it's your first time out. I apologize if it, it, you have been here before, but welcome out. Uh, Barbara's back once again. Linda back. We got Panakaj back again. Welcome. Thanks for coming. And then we've got uh, Tanny, Angie, Bernadine once again, and then we got Gary Cook. So thank you um, all for making it back into attendance. Thank you for your patience, um, you know, moving over from the stream. Like I said, I'm not sure why it's doing that, but yeah, we'll, we'll adjust as it comes. Okay, let me get um, the Facebook stream started. You know, you can chime in here. Hey, Jordan's back again. Mike is back. Perfect. I'm glad you're all here. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to get started here in a second. Hello students, Tim back here from Piano Lessons on the Web. Welcome back to our classroom. I'm your teacher, Tim, here once again. And a couple of things I want to run through before we get into the lesson is that you want to like the page if you are watching on Facebook and subscribe if you're new on YouTube because we have new lessons coming out every Friday, every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you don't want to miss a beat i know some people like when i say that share this lesson the more students we have in attendance the better so share this on your facebook your twitter uh any of the social media that you are currently on all right students your teacher tim back here today and today we are talking about the common problems that i find that beginner piano students face and problem number one is not having enough patience Students want to play difficult pieces first without working their way up. I see it all the time. I see it in the comments. Uh, I might even get a comment tonight about it. I'm trying to learn, um, you know, Moonlight Sonata, and I'm only like a week in or I'm a couple days in, and I'm really frustrated with it. And it's like, well, of course you are, because that piece is way probably above your head for 99.9% .9 of us working in our first week. You need to work your way up. You need to work from like... You know, smaller pieces like the Itsy Bitsy Spider, um, Jack and Jill went up the hill, you know, a lot of nursery rhymes, uh, Jingle Bells and Happy Birthday, things like that. Now, it might not be the most exciting thing at first, but I promise you over a month period, um, you'll that first month will be much better spent working on those seemingly rudimentary pieces, maybe getting some scales down things like that. In the long run, it will really, really help you because not only will you be able to actually learn Moonlight Sonata, Fur Elise, whatever you're trying to learn, you're actually going to be able to take those skills and continue learning after that, uh, which is what it's all about. So this channel is all about giving you the skills, the genuine piano knowledge. It's not learn piano in five seconds, 
learn piano in even 30 days. That just doesn't happen. And uh, anybody else that's telling you otherwise is being at least a little bit misleading, in my opinion. It takes time and effort, but I'm here for you on that. And we'll get through it together. But you want to start from the bottom and work your way to where you're going. Okay. Wait, hold on. Okay, problem number two is not making practicing a priority. No practice equals loss of progress equals loss of interest. I'm not even kidding. I find actually a lot of students, when I first start teaching them, they kind of hit the, out the gate running. They practice a lot in the first couple of weeks, but then, you know, real life sets in. You're like, oh, you know, I really have to get this thing done for school. You know, I really have a job. I got to take care of, I got kids to take care of, which I can only imagine what that's like on top of everything else. And they don't make a priority to practice. And what happens is, you know, the weeks go by, they might do okay for a few weeks, maybe in a few months. And they're going to be like, well, you know what, over the last um, few months, I haven't made any piano progress. And it's really, it's really demotivating. And it really 99% of the time leads to you quitting. And we don't want that. You know, even if you're making a little bit of progress over time, that's much better than making none at all. We all can't expect to become Mozart over a few weeks or a few months or even a few years. Um, but you want to be making practicing a priority so that you're getting it the time in. I like to treat it like a class or going to school or work um, where if you don't go, if you don't go to work, what's going to happen? You're going to lose your job. So pretend like it's that important. Schedule a time of day. Do it at the same time every day if possible, just so it becomes a habit. But if you can't do that, um, really try to schedule it in. Like maybe as soon as you get home from work or as soon as after you eat dinner or getting home from work, as soon as you put your kids to bed, uh, early in the morning is a great time. Uh, early in the morning is one of my favorite times to do anything uh, because it's out of the way. I keep hitting the microphone. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's, it's out of the way. And uh, then you don't have to worry about it. It's done for the day. Sure, you could actually practice in the morning and then play again later in the evening. And then you get it two times. But if you play it in the morning, you at least got it, you know, that one solid practice session. Also, for me personally, I think the clearest in the morning as the day goes on, my mind races a little bit more and more and more. Uh, and it's just a lot easier for me to get distracted the morning. I find is the best time. All right, let's take a look at the third problem that I find students face. Okay, uh, problem number three is hitting the wall in terms of progress and not being able to recover from that. They make progress, students make progress from the beginning, in the beginning, sorry, but give up once they hit their first plateau. Hitting plateaus is name of the game. It seriously happens to everybody happens to myself included. And what will happen, as I said in the written description there, is that you're going to make progress at first and you're going to feel really good about it. And then you're going to get to a point where you're like, you know, I feel like I'm not getting better or I'm getting less good for the effort I put in. Very, very normal. Um, but if you push through it, you continue to be dedicated and you just keep on it without getting negative. If you start to get negative, that's going to hurt you. Uh, really just keep pushing through it and then eventually you're going to hit that growth again. It does happen, I promise. It might not seem like it'll happen while you're going through it, but you hit that growth again and then you are re-energized, re-motivated. You actually have more confidence than ever before. And if you think about it, to me anyway, everything in life is like that. Um, exercise is like that. If you just first start exercising, you're like, wow, you know, I lost 10 pounds in two weeks or whatever and I'm feeling great. But then, you know, the next month goes by and you only lost like two pounds. And they're like, oh, well, you know, it's not what I thought. Uh, maybe I should give up. Wrong. Never give up. <laughs> That's another tip I have for you to really get through all this. And I know it's really cliche um, to say, but you shouldn't give up on your dream um, just because things get a little difficult. It's very normal. Don't feel like anything's wrong with you. It even happens to me. It even happens to me with making this YouTube channel. I'll get like a good stride going. Or like, man, things are really taking off. And then they always plateau. It always happens. Guaranteed. Things even go downhill a little bit so, uh, every once in a while, can, which can be disheartening. But, you know, just even a reminder for myself, 
You just got to keep pushing, uh, learn from any mistakes you might be making, and you'll be better off, and I'll be better off um, getting through it. All right, let's talk about the next thing. Problem number four, you probably saw this coming. You were probably surprised it wasn't number one because if you follow me for a while, you know what I'm going to say and say it with me now, playing too fast. Now, a lot of students might start to learn a piece and, you know, say you're learning for a lease or something like that and you're like, okay, I can play it at this speed. You get through the whole first page and then all of a sudden what happens? Uh, let's try it. And it just sounds like total crap because you're not really paying attention. You're just trying to go too fast too quickly. You thought that because you could go through it at half speed. Now you could go all the way at full speed or even too fast, even faster than what it's supposed to be. And it just, you know, does not, does not jive well, does not connect well. What you need to be doing, and I suggest you get a metronome to accomplish this, is you want to, first of all, when you're first learning a piece, just concentrate on the notes and getting as accurate with the notes and rhythms as possible. And you really don't want to play fast. If I'm able to hit all the notes accurately, that's probably an appropriate speed. I might even want to try speeding it up again over another playthrough. Now, if it starts to, little problems start to come in, you don't want to ignore those. You actually want to slow back down. The reason I said get a metronome is that with a metronome, you can set it to a certain number where it gives you regular beep, 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 or clicks or something like that to where you're making sure that you're playing at a consistent tempo. You're not speeding up halfway through. You're not slowing way down and then speeding up again, uh, which we tend to do. Students, uh, when they get to trouble areas, they tend to slow down a lot. Um, so you can kind of use that knowledge to your advantage. And then what you can do with the metronome is after you play it at a certain you know, number, BPMs, they call it beats per minute. So say you play it successfully at 60 BPMs. Well, to make sure that you're not trying again, like way, way too fast, you can bump it up to 65 or 70 BPMs and try it there and try that a few, a bunch of playthroughs. And then if you can do that, bump it up by five points. This makes sure that you're incrementally getting it faster. Another thing I want to tell you is that even after you've learned a piece for a long time, months to maybe years, never be over the idea that you never have to practice it slow again. Sometimes, even if you're able, if you sped it up the right way, did all the things I said right, and you may find over time that little mistakes might start to add in. There may even be mistakes you're not, you weren't even aware of the first time this happens. Nothing's wrong with you if it happens. It happens to me all the time. And slowing back down again can really help you uh, really you know, go through it slow and say, wait a second, I really wasn't accurate with this tempo. I really wasn't accurate with this or that. So always um, slow down, please. It's the number one thing affecting um, piano students everywhere. Okay, problem number five. We talked a little bit about this in previous lessons uh, along with the slowing down, which is skipping music theory, note reading, and taking shortcuts in general. Very, very bad. Um, I get questions all the time. Do I really need to learn how to read music? Do I really need to learn music theory? Do I really need to learn how dynamics work and things like that? Can't I just you know, do, do it this way and take shortcuts? The answer is no. You can't skip any of that. And No. Don't do it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop skipping stuff. <laughs> Take the time to learn this stuff. You may even think to yourself, man, music theory is so boring. You know what? I used to think music theory was boring until I got good at it, until I put the time in. And I really love thinking about music theory now. I love writing little songs or helping students write their own songs and really explaining this stuff to them. It really jives with me and I really love it, but had I given up on it a long time ago and skipped it, well, we wouldn't really be here right now, now would I? I would have failed out of music school. Um, so make sure you're spending time on note reading and music theory particularly. Uh, ear training is pretty important. You can go a while without practicing ear training and it won't affect you. It'll affect you more than you think, but it won't totally derail you. 
uh, skipping music theory and note reading will totally throw you off and definitely hurt you sooner rather than later. You also want to do want to be practicing your ear training because it really, really does help. Okay, on to the next problem. This one we haven't talked about before very much, which is ignoring sloppy technique and fingering. Now, fingering, if you don't know, is the use of proper use of fingers at certain places. So if I'm playing a scale, you use a certain fingering with it, finger technique, and that allows you to play up and down the piano a lot more effectively. If I just ignore it, if I'm like, It's going to be really, really bad. It's not going to end well. So you really got to take your time. Make sure you have those finger crosses right. Make sure you have the correct notes with the correct fingers. Again, you want to uh, build up to this nice and slow. And um, you also don't want to be ignoring proper things like uh, having your fingers curved. Because having your fingers flat, first of all, to keep your fingers flat, that requires your muscles to be extended, believe it or not. You would think having them flat would be the easiest. But no, if, what I want you to do is pull out your hands right now, stick out your fingers right in front of you, and then relax them. And when you relax the muscles, what do they do? They curve all on their own. How about that? So it's actually, I don't know why students keep their hands stretched out. Maybe because they're nervous or they think they have to do that. Um, but honestly, it's easier on your hands to keep them relaxed and curved. Now, you don't want them like curved the other way where you have the muscles engaged a lot. This will actually hurt your ability. It actually might even hurt your hand, um, you know, not in terms of damaging it, but it will wear out your muscles. And then you're, after an hour of playing, you'll be like, oh man, I really, really need a break. That might happen anyway, actually. But the more relaxed your hands and fingers are, the better, the more responsive they're going to be, believe it or not. Now, it takes some time uh, to get used to this, especially if you are used to uh, having them flat all the time. You know, it's all about formulating a good, you know, habits. I'm a big fan of habits, by the way. We have bad habits. We all know about those. You know, no matter what it is, whether it's biting your nails, smoking cigarettes. I don't smoke cigarettes, thank goodness. <laughs> or, you know, eating the wrong foods. But you can develop good habits the same way. You just have to like kind of be conscious of it, being like, okay, I really need to do it this way. And at first, it's really going to feel like you're fighting against the grain. But um, over time, you will develop good habits. Another good habit to have, outside of piano anyway, is like exercise. You know, I think that's a perfect one that people can really relate to because when you first start exercising, it seems like it's going to kill you. And you're like, oh. I can't do this every day or I can't do this every other day or however often I'm supposed to do it. But once you get into a rhythm, it, it actually is something you will look forward to most days unless you're like sick or real tired or something. Um, so, but you'll be like, because I look forward to that run in the morning to where um, when I first started to do it, it was like killing me. <laughs> or at least I thought it was. So it, it's it, this relates to a lot of things in life. And uh, think about not uh, making things a good habit. I know this wasn't even really part of the problem, but it, it goes into not ignoring sloppy technique because if you're ignoring sloppy technique, you're developing a bad habit of doing that. So that's number six. Let's look at problem number seven. Problem number seven is not practicing sight reading. And believe it or not, I did this for the first uh, tw like 19 years of my life. In fact, when I applied to Westchester U University School of Music and I had to do the audition, my piano teacher was like, well, we better start practicing sight reading, which is reading a piece of music from sight. And I was like, you can do that? <laughs> like, that's a thing that you can do? Now, I knew, like, I got the, the concept's pretty easy to get in your head, but I didn't know you could play, like, real pieces like that. I know maybe you could, like, read some real simple stuff. And actually, when you're first starting to sight read, you want to do it that way. Um, but you want to be practicing sight reading every single day. I'm not even kidding. I'm going to try to put a link. Remember to put a link in the description for you. Um, look up on YouTube when you're done or write this down. Um, go to the search and type in 
um, how to sight read the best way or the best method and my video will come up and I highly recommend you check that out because that'll give you the methodology on sight reading. Um, basically sight reading is looking at a piece of music you've never seen it before and being able to play through it. Not perfectly but being able to like read the notes, get the rhythms like mostly right, maybe like 80% right I would say is like a successful sight read. And uh, the more you do this, the better you're going to get at it, the more accurate you're going to get. And then eventually you'll be able to read real pieces like right off the bat. It will make piano a hundred times more enjoyable for you because you're not going to have to like, uh, like, okay, I'm learning for release, but it sounds nothing like for release. And it's really aggravating. I remember what that's like. But if you're a good sight reader, it starts to come together much much faster it makes the whole thing more enjoyable and you will actually be able to learn pieces uh i was going to say a million times faster that's a slight exaggeration but you're going to be able to learn pieces much 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 faster and everything's going to be much 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 more enjoyable i promise so number seven one of the important ones that i've only mentioned a little bit here in class and don't forget it Okay, we have a student question here. I asked you earlier in the week, um, and the question is from Nick Sunverse. Nick Sunnyverse. Uh, Hello, I can read notes, flat, sharps. However, having a hard time reading other symbols that come with pieces. For example, 8VA, the wavy lines that appear above the staff. Right hand, RH, etc., which stands for right hand. As a self-taught uh, pianist, how to figure out what these symbols means. Okay, this is a great question. Let's talk about this a little bit. In fact, let me get up my favorite tool in the universe. Maybe not in the universe, but one of, one of the top three. Google.com. So, you know, you could always, and now this is like oversimplifying it, and I'm going to give you some more information in a second. But just type in, um, what does RH mean piano see and then it's a there's a google or there's a yahoo answers there that's probably going to tell you rh means right hand um and then here right here you see below lh stands for left hand so right away just like on a simple search i could figure out what that is now sometimes you might not know what something is called you might have the symbol and you're like mm, i don't really know what in the world that is what I highly recommend you do is type in piano symbols and then Wikipedia. Wikipedia has a great piano symbols, list of musical symbols it's called. And you want to take a look through here. And now they have them by name, you know, lines, clefs, notes, and rest. You might not know what it's called. But here you can just scroll down and look and say, okay, um... You know, maybe I saw this, the neutral clef, which is used for pitchless instruments for such as drums or percussion or anything like that. So there you go. Then you have like, oh, I've never even really seen this one very much. The treble clef with an eight on it, the octave clef. So you can scroll down here and look for anything that you might be on the lookout for. I find that they have 99% of the stuff written out there, unless it's something really, really obscure. So they even have demi sharps and things like that, which I've personally never seen in Western music at all. Now, like the squiggly lines, it could be a glissando or something like that. So remember, go to Wikipedia, um, go to their list of musical symbols, and then scroll down until you see what you want, and then pick it out from there. A very common uh, question that I get and a very common problem to have. Thank you so much for that question. It was great. All right, and I want you to share in the comments of this video, what are some problems that you commonly come across when learning how to play piano? What did you think about our list today? Let me know in the comments. I feel like when we come together as a classroom, we learn a whole lot more. I even learn from you a lot of times, and I'm more than happy to share with you my insights you know, soon after the video is posted to your questions, I always try to get through you know, the first ones that pop up. So I really wanna know what you think send me those questions in the comments. Okay. 
Um, okay, I think that's it for the main part of the lesson. We're going to keep going here. Let me know any comments or questions you have um, in the chat. Before we continue, I want to let you know that if you liked tonight's lesson and you want to support what we do over here, please leave a super chat if you want. It's a great way to support our channel and... Um, you know, and I really, really appreciate it because, as you know, it takes a lot of time and effort to put all this together. Um, so any little bit helps. Another great way to support the channel is, while some questions are rolling in here, is to go to my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. Okay, so over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, I have over 20 courses designed to help you learn a lot more about piano and music. Now, they have the same types of instructional videos. Now, they are exclusive to the website, but the same types of instructional videos you've come to love from the channel, but including assignments, real sheet music to play, practice examples, notes, and a lot of other things to make sure that you're not only just learning these topics, but you're practicing and mastering them as well. So it offers a lot more than what this YouTube channel can offer. So go over there and check it out. Uh, one thing I wanna tell you is that if you use code YouTube during checkout, you can get 15% off any order. And if you take a look at the buy courses page, you can t check out that we have course packs available. So if you want to pick up a bunch of courses all around, like whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, or all of them, uh, you can do that and get a pretty big discount considering if you add up the individual courses. And, and you can also use the code YouTube on that as well. So say you want to pick up the all course pack for 219 these courses are, are $29.99 for most of them a piece, so you can do the math on it, so it adds up to a lot less than that. And then you can use the code YouTube on top of it. So like I said, if you like what you see over here on the channel, you're really, really going to like what you see over there. So I'm going to take that opportunity to tell you all about that. Okay, I'm going to be taking some more questions in here. It looks like we've gotten some comments and questions Back once again, I want to quickly thank Gary for the $10 Super Chat. Thank you so much, Gary. Very much appreciated. Uh, let's see. Let me scroll up a little bit before I get to Winslet Fan's question. Okay, I think I saw everybody... Uh, Loretta says, I look eagerly to uh, look forward to being with you all, my beloved and precious family, albeit I regularly procrastinate when it comes to practice. Yeah, so set a timer or just treat it like it's a, a class or something that you're going to get in trouble for not attending or treat it like what we do tonight. You know, you seem to come pretty regularly, Laredo, so kind of put it in your head that, you know, we're meeting at this time and come, um, you know, just apply the same mentality to your practice. Okay, let's see here. Hey, Abigail's back once again. Welcome, everybody. Um, if I didn't get a chance to say hello to you, welcome out. And we've got Jordan just leave me hate theory. Well, you have to get over that, unfortunately. Um, let's see. I like theory. Yeah, you will eventually like theory. At least I did. You may never like it, but you have to at least know the very basics of how, like, um, parts of theory that I would definitely learn. Key signatures. I almost put up two fingers there. <laughs> Key signatures, uh, chords, uh, major, minor, diminished, augmented, seventh chords, things like that. Uh, I would at least learn those two things. Intervals is a great thing to learn. Uh, chord progressions is good to learn. It's not as necessary as the other things I put out there. But yeah, learn those things um, and then go from there. How can you skip note reading and still be able to play anything? Asked Linda. Great question, Linda, because uh, we have this thing now on YouTube especially or on the internet called Synthesia where there are these videos where it just lights up what keys you have to press and people do that. Now you may be wondering or maybe you've noticed that that lacks a lot of the other things in music because music isn't just about playing the right notes. Um, it's about having the correct rhythms. It, it kind of does that, but it does. It totally ignores dynamics or what's going on behind the piece, the little articulations to really get that sound that you want, you know, with the legatos and the staccatos and things like that. So 
Uh, great question there. Okay, Adria says, I never learned it. My instructor, uh, I mean, instructor at the time um, didn't teach me. Didn't think it was a priority at the time of my lessons. Yeah, it definitely is in the long term. You can start learning to play piano without theory, but it will hurt you in the end, I promise. Andrew says, I like theory, just can't get, in, get it to communicate with my fingers. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. Rowenza fan says, I stretch my pinky out more, mostly because my hands are small. I do the same thing. I do not have really, really large hands. What I do have are like long finger, not long, like they're not really long. Um, they're long in comparison to my hand. What I'm trying to say is I don't have hot dog fingers. So I do have very nimble fingers. So that works to my advantage, but my hands are not very large. I can hit a ninth fairly reliably. I struggle hitting it, though, in music, like in a real piece. So, yeah, ninths I kind of struggle with. I have students that are, like, 11 years old, and they can hit tenths. <laughs> I seriously, like a student I had the other day, I was like, I cannot believe that you can hit a tenth, and I can only hit a ninth, and you're ten. And her 11, I, I, I think he, he might even be 12, but that's still really early, you know. And I can't hit him, and I'll never be able to hit him because I'm done, my hands are done growing. Okay, Mike says, my course is also discussed music theory, but how deep do you go within the course? Okay, so music theory one, I believe, covers uh, the basics. Uh, let me go here because you can check out the course descriptions and then I'll kind of give you a little bit more detail there. So Music Theory 1. Music Theory 1 actually covers a lot of things I just mentioned that you should learn. Uh, identify, understand, and write chords, key signatures, common chord progressions like 1-4-5-1, one, 1-2-5-1, one, 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 uh, major components of a song. This is like melody, harmony, uh, things like that. Uh, melodic and harmony concepts, how they work together, and very basic songwriting. So we do write a song or a piece by the end of the piece. That is the final project. I think that you might even write two during the course. Uh, all right. Allergies back once again, but I think I'll manage. They're not too bad. Okay. Music theory level two. Uh, by the end of the course, you will be able to understand the proper names of the scale degree and a given key. Now, we have not talked about that a whole lot during uh, the live streams or anything like that, but that's things like tonic, supertonic, mediant, subdominant, dominant, mediant, leading tone, and then we talk about, you know, kind of how they function a little bit. Uh, different minor scales and key signatures. We haven't touched on that a whole lot during the... Uh, in the YouTube channel, I do have a couple of lessons on it. Identify and write less common chord progressions. Um, this is probably like one, four, seven, one, things like that. And then we're going to uh, understand how to substitute one chord for another and make up your own chord progressions. One thing we haven't talked about, I don't think at all, we talked a little bit about substitutions, but we haven't talked about it all, are secondary dominant chords. And barely at all, uh, I don't think I've talked about it very much at all, is modulations or how to change a key, you know, while you're in the middle of a piece. Let's go over music theory level three. That's the last official music theory course. But of course, there are composition courses as well, where you take all the concepts you've learned uh, in those courses and you start putting them more to use. And then there's also music theory in those courses that build off of that. But in music theory level three, you got um, how to make a more, piece more interesting by changing its chords via uh, reharmonization. So you're swapping out chords for others to give it a little a unique and more interesting sound. How to use secondary dominant and second leading tone, secondary leading tone chords, never talked about on the channel and talked about in the course, obviously. Uh, common chord progressions for minor keys, haven't really touched on that in the, in the YouTube channel. Uh, general voice leading rules. Barely touched on that in the you know YouTube channel. I think you get the idea by now. So a lot of this stuff, especially as you get into level two and level three, uh, more and more of it is stuff we've never even covered at all. And then how to alter the rhythms in a song to make it sound 
more interesting. So that's just kind of what the music theory courses cover there. All right, let's go back to here and let me see what some other, you know, some other comments we have are. Okay, uh, Gary says, I saw a lesson about sight reading and they said it is hard even for virtuoso musicians to learn if they don't start when they learn the instrument. Uh, Jaco Pastarius uh, was the key example they used. He used to learn later in life and wish he had done it from the start. Um, sight reading, if you haven't started on sight reading yet, that's okay. Start now, though. And work your way up. Now, what will happen, though, is when you first start to sight read and you've never done it before, you're going to have to start way, 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 way back. You're not going to be able to sight read a piece close to what you're you're working on right now. You may have to start sight reading pieces like Itsy Bitsy Spider or just really rudimentary stuff like that uh, and work your way up. But, yeah, doing it from the start is key. Okay, one thing I did when I had lessons on Monday afternoon is I would practice before my lesson, nothing long, just like a review before going into my lesson. A very good practice to have, Adria. David says, I'm starting uh, piano after playing music professionally for many years, and I play sax and can read. What course is appropriate for me? So let me uh, read through your question again. I'm starting piano after playing music professionally for many years. Okay. I play sax and read. Okay, so if you don't know music theory, um, I honestly... It depends on where you are with piano. Okay. Um, you know, I would... I want to say start from the beginning, but I'm really not sure where you are and what you're able to play. What I recommend you do is just go through the courses... Uh, oh, wait, let's bring you back here. Um, go through the courses. So you click on Music Courses. You scroll down. And you start with these beginning courses that are listed first. These are the ones you probably should start with. But to see if you know all the stuff in the course already or not, uh, click on View Course and read the description. Look at you know what you need to know. Obviously, this is the first course, so there's nothing. But uh, take a look at this list. of the, By the end of the course, you will be able to. Take a look at that. And ask yourself, do I know how to find notes on the keyboard? Do I know how to read music? Do I know how to play simple rhythms, play simple songs, play simple dynamics, find music to play? Uh, if you know how to do those things already, you can probably skip that course. If you're new to learning piano, though, I wouldn't skip too far ahead. Like, if you know how to read music, you can probably skip that course. Look at piano level one. You know, ask yourself, do I am I familiar with playing with articulation, staccato, and legato? Do I know how to play uh, with both hands, which is actually what this course starts to focus on? Um, so you might want to actually start with the uh, playing the piano level one if you have a background in music already, and go from there. You know, go through piano level one, level two, level three, and so forth. And then I'm not sure if you know music theory or at all, but the same thing. You want to go over to music theory, and you want to, you know, click on the first one here, and read the description, and see if you know that stuff already. Oh, by the end of the course, that's the one you want to read, and you want to know if you know how to write chords or understand chords and play them on the piano. So take a look there. If you want to know what order to take the courses in, because obviously they are listed, you know, the easier courses are listed first for the most part. But if you're like, okay, um, I started on piano, but you know, when should I take music theory? When should I take rhythm, the ear training, and all the rest? Go to, uh, if you hover over music theory courses at the top, go to music uh, recommended course, pa uh, course path. Yeah, I can't talk. And scroll down, and this is the list of the order in which you should be taking the courses. So you should be taking introduction to piano music, how to read music, Playing the Piano 1 and Music Theory Level 1 can be basically taken at the same time. And then they're grouped by beginners, intermediates, and so forth. But even within each of these, this is the order I recommend that you take these courses so that everything uh, makes the most sense from like starting from the beginning 
up to where you are now. And that's true for anybody else who's looking to pick up some courses. And you may be wondering which ones you should take first. You can also email me, tim at lessonsontheweb.com. And I'd be more than happy to help you out. All right, let's continue on here. Okay, uh, wait, hold on a second. I have to blow my nose here. And I don't really want to do that on camera. Or at least wipe my nose here. All right, here we go. Not that it's really a big deal, but... Okay. Hey, Grace is here once again. How you doing, Grace? Okay. I have hot dog fingers. I'm probably seeing or hearing you now. Yeah, reset the stream and see if that works. Uh, Real Winds of Fan says, I'm struggling to retain my repertoire. Any song that doesn't get a run through every day fades alarming, alarmingly fast. That's not that uncommon to tell you the truth. That happens to me as well. Um, what you want to do is just maybe pick one of your practice days and do it just going over your repertoire. And that'll kind of help keep it somewhat solid. Um, it's a lot like riding the bu a bike, right? I haven't ride a, rode a bike in years and years, maybe 10 years. But I'm sure if I hopped on one uh, after a few minutes, maybe an hour, I could really get the hang of it again. Um, it might not be that fast with piano, but it's the same idea. If you learn a piece... I mean, if I even play a piece now that I learned 10 plus years ago, I can pick it up faster. You know, it, it's going to be rocky starting back out, but I can pick it up faster than I did before. It's pretty normal, though, for them to fall by the wayside over time. Okay, I'm the same. I play guitar. I just bought them all and started at the beginning, says Gary. Yeah, you can do that as well. Uh, I just happen to be a procrastinator of note. And I become impatient if I do not learn fast enough, says Laredo. I shall certainly overcome those with other problems over time. Uh, sight reading is a killer for me. Yeah. So anything, I'm a big fan also of the mindset that if there's something you need to get better at, you're sloppy at it or you just hate it or, or whatever it is, you're scared because you're, you know it's not your strong suit, what should you do? The answer is always do that thing more often. If you're afraid to talk to pretty girls, do that more often. If you're afraid to, I know not everybody can relate to that, but if, if you're not good at math, do math more often. If you're not good at playing scales, play your scales more often. That is, that is the way. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, running through um, multiple comments here. Every time I practice over, I feel like I am sight reading it new. It, every time, though? Like, even pieces that you've been learning for a while? Tim, I have a problem seeing and hearing you. Okay, I read that. Hopefully you have that figured out, Abigail. I'm not hearing you now. Okay, um, I'll try to fix that in a second. I can only make uh, the octave in my left hand and not at all in my right. My injury stops that. Yeah, so if you have an injury, you might have to work with that um, and figure that out. And talk to a doctor, not me. <laughs> I mean it for an injury because I don't want to give you bad advice. And I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I can't, I can't give you that type of advice on how to exactly overcome that. Okay, I'm not sure. I apologize to Abigail because Abigail has been tr having trouble um, seeing us. Um, yeah, the only thing I can tell you, Abigail, uh, although you can't see me or something. I'm not, I forget what the issue is. Um, try reloading the page if you have done that. Restart computer. Restarting your computer is always like a surefire way of hopefully fixing the problem. It doesn't always, but try that. Okay. 
Okay, Grace is uh, sorry uh, they're late, but that's okay, Grace. Not a problem. I kind of lost track of time. It happens to the best of us. Uh, let's see. We got Abigail can't hear me uh, as a few minutes ago. Hopefully that works out for you, Abigail. We got Angie here. I think I've already given up. I went from confidence and excitement to feeling like perhaps I should not be playing. I switched to doing something with a lot of chords and can't get anywhere. Okay, Angie, what I suggest you do is don't give up, first of all. You're, and the way you're feeling is totally normal. We've all, you know, well, I have had those feelings before. What you need to do is you need to go back to basics and pick a piece that you can learn a little bit easier. Regain some of your confidence back. If it's something that's too far above um, your level too soon, you're going to feel that frustration. You're just going to feel like, well, man, maybe it's just not working out. So backpedal just a little bit. Find something that might challenge you a little bit but isn't going to be too crazy. And uh, have fun with it again. Make sure you're always practicing something that you do for fun. You, you always want to be challenging yourself with one piece and then have another piece at least that you think is just fun to play. And learn a few of those again. Rekindle your love for music. And keep going. Please don't quit. <laughs> Please don't quit learning piano. I think that's uh, a mistake. Okay, Angie isn't alone in the sentiment. I've been struggling, but I'm not ready to give up. I hope you don't give up, Angie. You can do it. I agree, Tanny. Thank you very much for being an encouraging voice. You might want to try uh, just one of the apps to keep you engaged. Yeah, and that is, um, Grace says, don't give up. It'll be worth it. That's one of the things, though, is that music isn't, learning music isn't supposed to be easy. And it is at first, or it could be at first, or at times you really hit like a really good, you know, rhythm to it and you're really doing well. Um, but honestly, one of the most, re most frustrating and rewarding parts about learning music is that it's hard. You know, I find that's the same with business as well. Business is like the same way to me where, uh, and I mentioned before with the YouTube channel, where I'll be hitting really good strides, you know, our community, our community is actually no matter what getting stronger and stronger and stronger all the time. And that's what I got to remember. But sometimes the, the views are up, sometimes they're down, sometimes, you know, subscribers are up or down, sometimes, um, you know, what's going on with the website is up and down. Um, and it's just, it's a roller coaster. But I feel like whenever I'm struggling, getting through that is the true rewarding part. If everything just kind of clicked together right away. I think I, it would be boring for me, and um, maybe I'd be living in a mansion right now, but, you know, I just don't think that would be as satisfying as really working really, really hard and um, feeling frustrated, but getting over it finally and feeling good about it. But I suggest for you, just step it back a little bit, you know, get your confidence back up with maybe uh, some pieces that you really love to play or um, pieces that you can manage a bit easier than what you're trying now. I wanted to show off something I had learned with my sister and was totally frustrated and sold everything. Uh-oh. Don't do that. At least if you're talking about piano, I might have missed something um, up top. Jonathan says, hi, Tim. I have a hard time with my sight reading. Can you advise? Usually I just memorize the pieces. Yeah. So um, first thing is if you have not seen the lesson yet, what I recommend you do, you, you probably have seen it already, but I'm not sure, is you want to type in um, how to sight read the best way and ch uh, check out my lesson on that right here you know I'm like the second one that pops up or so take a look at that lesson because that'll guide you through it what I recommend you do is start sight reading every day um, start with easy stuff so go to if you type in piano sight reading um, examples into Google the first one that comes up, at least the first one for me, is this one called belmont.edu slash music slash admissions slash piano underscore site reading. But hopefully if you type in the Google, it'll pop up 
and you can uh, look for yourself and just scroll down and start with easy sight reading if you're new to sight reading and start playing these play maybe two of these a day if you find them really really easy like I am maybe do four a day but you want to start from the bottom and work your way up and uh, do them every every single day that is the most important thing about it and go through all of them and then once you go through all of them as you can see they get a little harder as you as you continue so if they start out easy do not worry once you're done that go to intermediate sight reading level one do the same thing we'll learn anywhere between two and four of these a day play through them I'd play through them twice one time as a genuine sight read another time trying to correct as many mistakes as you can and just go through them all this will take you a while a few weeks and then go through and then do number two and then you go through all those and continue the same thing these are actually like real pieces now this is probably like where the real sight reading begins because these are legit pieces and then you know do the intermediate sight reading level three and repeat all the way until you're done the advanced ones and this will keep you sight reading and busy for quite a while but start with that easy one even if it's below your current level um, because you don't want to have any gaps in your sight reading that's going to create a lot of confusion a lot of frustration so start your way up from the beginning even if the first few days of sight reading are going to be like oh yeah i get it whatever i can play this no problem they get f they get more difficult quick so start from the beginning and before you know it after a few weeks you'll really be challenging yourself sight reading. The most important thing about sight reading is what? Doing it every day. How do you suggest uh, deal with the thumb under over? Some say uh, the rock, to rock the hand, others say something else. What do you say when playing scales and arpeggios? Okay, deal with the thumb under over. Some say to rock the hand. Others say something else. So you're talking about the thumb underneath the other fingers. Okay. So if I'm doing a scale like the C major scale, just the right hand to make it easy. You know, I've been doing it so long that I don't even really think about it. So let me kind of give you what I don't do, right? And this takes a lot of getting used to to do. I remember it used to be awkward for me. So say I'm doing the C major scale where when you hit this third note, you have to cross under and hit that F right there. What I do is I do a combination of tucking the thumb underneath. I don't tuck it all the way under to where it's like actually hurting my hand. But I just gently like, I wish you could see it a little better, but the way the camera's angled, I can't show you. But... Hopefully you can see that well enough. I do a thing where I'm actually moving my hand this way still, while also tucking it underneath at the same time. What this does is it kind of makes a compromise between tucking your thumb underneath and moving your hand this way. Because if I just hit this third note, and I immediately, without moving, continuing to move this way, and hit it like that, I have to shove my thumb way underneath my hand, and that hurts. It actually isn't as effective so notice as my hand continues to move that way no matter what in terms of arpeggios it's the same thing you know I could hit this G tuck my thumb underneath and hit the G or the C up here the problem with that is it hurts it slows down right there as you can see there's a bigger gap between the G and the C here so as soon as I hit this G I'm like gliding almost while also tucking my thumb underneath a little bit. Takes some getting used to. It's going to feel awkward at first. But you're going to get better and better at it as you go. Same thing with the left hand. I'm, I'm hitting my thumb here. I'm pivoting left hand's more of a pivot especially going up so my hand is always moving in the direction I'm not really stopping my hand to move it underneath or anything like that so try that out it's gonna be weird at first um, but 
just keep going with it and um, just try that out with the C major scale. See if you can follow my advice and get that a little bit smoother. Somebody gave us this $5 super chat. It's Angie. Angie, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Very, very much appreciated. Uh, thank you so, so much. And don't quit. Keep going at it. I hope, uh, you know, one of these lessons in the near future, you're going to be saying, you know, thank you so much, Tim. I didn't give up and things are going a lot better now or they're just going better than they were before. We are, we're all about improvement here. Oh, Linda Reitz, $2 Super Chat. Thank you so much, Linda, for your support. Very much appreciated once again. Uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, Real Winds of Fans got a scoot. All right, we'll have a great one. Okay, everybody, uh, we are going to end it here in a second, but let me get to Botaz's question. David, uh, Botaz says, David, I think it's both. Legato phrases, thumb under for speed, thumb under. Overall, it's a weird blend of both. Uh, wait, let me take a look here. A weird blend of both. Search up. Taubman technique. I haven't heard about the scales and arpeggios. So I'm going to have to take a look at this once we're done. One last question. Uh, C sharp scale. Do you start with finger? No, I do not start with finger number one, I don't think. Uh, C sharp scale. Yeah, C sharp scale, I start with two and end with two. Right, uh, left hand, I start with three and with three. Um, if you want to find all um let me try to find a website for you first um piano scales piano scales .org, you can find a lot of the proper fingerings for the scales uh, they're all listed here like for instance the d major scale gives you what fingers to start and end with um, all the ones c sharps in here right here so it starts with three like i said uh, or with the left hand starts with three the left hand starts with two. So check those out if you want the proper fingering. Um, you can also, uh, in the description, there should be a link that says uh, something like uh, recommended keywords and books. Um, that are It's my Amazon affiliate store. Scroll down. There should be a book of scales and arpeggios. If you buy it from that affiliate link, it'll help me out. And it's a really great all-in-one book to have that you can just open up any time. It's real easy. Of all the correct piano, uh, the the fingerings, the scales, and also uh, multiple octaves along with arpeggios and everything like that. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, make sure to take a look at that. And then one of my courses I also covered, and I, I can't quite remember off the top of my head right now. Thanks for the great lesson, Tim. Have a great evening. You too, Jordan. Thank you so much for your support. Really, really appreciate it. Um, I love getting the, the card I got from you in the mail. Very, very nice. Thank you so much. Um, okay. What a great lesson. Thanks, everybody, for the support. You're welcome, Angie. Best of luck to you, by the way. And uh, thanks, Linda, says Chris. Wait, what does Chris say? you know any good books for learning piano? Yes, I do, um, which I think Linda had already answered for me. So going on good old Amazon, Alfred Adult Piano Level 1. I recommend you start with that one. That's a great series to start out with. And again, if you go to the link in the description of like recommended books and things at my Amazon store, uh, if you buy it from there, it'll help me out. Amazon will give me a couple of bucks for that. Um, and it won't cost you anything else. But that's totally up to you. You can buy it from wherever you want. Okay, uh, let me think about what I want to say before we go. Because I always like to wrap up the lesson. Um, kind of tell you where to go from here. So when I edit together the lesson, it goes 
nice and smoothly. Okay, um, let me think here. Problems, okay. Think about what we talked about today. So students, I highly recommend you subscribe because we have new lessons coming out all the time. I, mean, I want you to become a more... Let me start that again. My tongue was tied. Students, I really want you to subscribe because we have more lessons coming out all the time. And I want you to become a bigger part of our community, all learning together. When we all share our knowledge, we all learn that much more. I even learn from you a lot of times. And go to pianolessonsontheweb.com if you're interested in my courses. Remember, code YouTube will get you 15% off any order. So thanks everybody and I'll talk to you in the next lesson. This has been Tim, your piano teacher. Thank you so much. Grace says, thank you. You're very welcome, Grace. Uh, you're very welcome, David. Thanks for coming out. Anybody who's new here, we meet Fridays, Sundays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're meeting again on Sunday at the same time we met today. I hope to see you there. I loved uh, hanging out with you today and, you know, teaching you. Laura says, thank you for yet another great lesson, Tim, your beloved family, for making another morning pleasant and worthwhile. God bless all of you. Thank you very much, Laredo. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for the super chats and just being here in general. Um, very, very, it makes it all worth doing. Thank you so much. Shame I had to jank the live stream again, says Adria. Oh, Adria, I don't think it had anything to do with you. If it did, we'll just keep restarting them and uh, get on the right track here. Not a big deal. I don't think it had anything to do with you, though, unless you have some kind of magical powers. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us in class. I'll see you in the next class. Have a great evening or morning or whatever time it is for you.